Okay, right. So um, basically collage is, well, Peter Blake described it in an exhibition called About Collage that he did for Tate about 30 years ago. And he says it's just two things being stuck together. So anything that is glued together can be called a collage, but um, ultimately everyone takes it a lot further than that. And collage, it's, it's I, I see it like um, painting with paper. So you, you've got your palette, but it can be an alterable, completely alterable piece. I love those colors. You know, I mean, it's just, it, you can do, anything with paper and what, what I find is it, it's, it's what the paper youth hi it's Sam what, hi there it's what the paper provides you should Sorry know this you. Bit, that's all right <laughs> that's good good to see you again after um probably about 15 years or so decades indeed yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're well you 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 you're keeping I'm good. I've been out playing again, and I get very creative out here. So, it's... oh, you're in Spain now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you were coming back. Right. Yeah. Well, I was due back, but I keep putting it off. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Traveling must be a nightmare at the moment. Yeah, I've done it a couple of times, but it's, it's not, unless I have to, I'm like, you know, it's a it is it is a real uh hassle but still it's good to just do it as well mm -hmm. but uh how are you doing are we in your uh, studio yeah yeah this is this is the studio do you want to right. quick door? yeah well i can lift it up and go so this is yeah this is where i operate and um, yeah yeah that's my um soon to be altered mannequin um, You've done a few mannequins, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy that. It's just, I don't know. Um, that's where I move into 3D. It. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll just show you where um, where it is. I don't know if you can see. That's that's the view out my window. Uh, but you're right by the river, are you? It's, it's on the River Brent. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So whereabouts? Brentford. <coughs> yeah. And um, so you get the ducks going by. Uh, yeah, the, the first day I was here, I was it was in July, about seven years ago, and I opened my window and I suddenly heard this amazing noise of <laughs> and it was two swans flying past wow. the window. Wow. And I thought, I quite like it here. <laughs> so, so I've sort of stayed. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. So what, um, what turned you on after decades of music uh, onto collage specifically? Let's start there. Well, the collage thing, I think that was what Loop Guru were doing anyway. With samples. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. It's um, borrowing stuff, yeah, and then juxtaposing it with something else that then makes yeah. it your own. Mm. And so I think, really, I, I was collaging from the seventies. What did you like about that then? You know, it's taking um, found sound or found images, or yeah, it was just finding stuff it's it's like yeah. um it's it, I, I just went on the kind of exploration of finding things and i always wanted to transport people to kind of like a place of magic yeah with music so i mean a lot of my musical background i was trying to emulate a turkish marketplace or <laughs> yeah. or something like that um to transport people mm. uh, and I think I just started, I'd always been sort of dabbling with painting and doing bits of hacking up bits of wood and stuff like that. And then I slowly 
got more and more involved in basically just the visual side. So um, other than a few things that, you know, I just got um, the addictive nature of bits of paper. What I liked about sampling is, I think, is, is that it's like, um, it's a fan's medium. Yep. You know, because if especially with music, if you're a big fan of music and you, you know those records, you, you go through your record collection and you find these little beats and these little things. Yeah. And it just gets you deeper and deeper into it, doesn't it, in a way. It also has a way of sort of somehow taking the ego out of it a little bit because it's not you drawing it. You're appropriating it in a way. Yeah. Do you like, find that? Or borrowing. Yes. Well, well stealing. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, for... It is stealing, um, but it's also borrowing. It's also, to put it in a good way, recycling. Yes. So definitely with bits of paper. Um, yeah. I find it. I mean, one of the things I didn't show you in my little tour of the studio is the amount of books I've got hidden. It's my source material. And I go to charity shops and just pick up loads and loads of books. Do, do um, you find a copy of them and then cut them up or do you just cut them up out of the book? Uh, sort of, uh, when I first started doing collage, I felt guilt. Yeah. <laughs> book burning or something um, yeah. Yeah. and and then when I started getting everything from a charity shop it became so I'm not only giving to charity but yeah. I'm recycling something that hopefully is being yeah. used anyway yeah but sometimes I just see stuff yeah and I it just puts me in a place where if I juxtapose that with something else, it's just like mm. sound, where all of a sudden you create something new with that juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. more impossible the juxtaposition, the more interesting it becomes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So give us an example of something you've done like that recently, where you're juxtaposing two opposites in that way. Um, Is that? Yeah, I could, well, I could hear. It's one thing talking about it, isn't it? Another thing. Yeah. Um, so there, again, a charity shop. Yeah. It was right. a kind of canvas. I think I got it for three quid or something. Yeah. The Disney film. And then I put collage on top of the Disney film. And if I bring it oh, close. Yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. think jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. On the top of that. So that... That is impossible juxtaposition in some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's there's always loads. <laughs> Jigsaw puzzle puzzles are always good, aren't they? Um, yeah. I don't like actually doing them. Yeah, they're hard. Yeah, I mean that that was the thing. I had the background ready, and then I thought, right, I've now got to get the jigsaw puzzle done so I can choose the yeah. bit. Mm. That took more time than collaging. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, an old Renaissance painting. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and, and then putting yeah. bits of uh, cartoons, bits yeah. of Sigma Polk. Yeah. So and what is it like about the juxtaposition? Is it just that it twixes your eye and mind or makes you consider other things differently or um, well you put me onto the idea of new mythology which i was sort of delving in anyway well you've run with that i've seen your posts and i'm yeah. like hey, going for it and yeah. that was actually a struggle to get the magazine to go with that as a theme and like, yeah. well people are like oh we don't need a theme and i'm like no themes are good yeah um, um you know what, what what that did was put what i'm doing Mm. Into a two word context, yes, so doing that anyway, yes, yeah, um, yes, you know. So, I've, I've been looking much more into old mythology, yeah, and then the juxtaposition is bringing in the new, yeah, uh, unusual bits of cartoons, 
yeah. element. Mm. Um, it's been a... I always used to call uh, Acid House folk music, and now there's a film being made on Spiral Tribe, and they're calling it Modern Folk Music Tales, you yeah. know. And, and I thought, oh, yeah, there is a continuum um, of 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 that uh, sort of uh, continuity of of, that, of those traditions through people yeah. destroying the arts and reinventing them in a new I way, thought, isn't it? I always thought that punk was folk music because folk music is basically people getting together and going, yeah. okay, let's make let's make music, let's do yeah. it. Music, yeah. folks, you know, and. Yeah. All of a sudden, they were throwing away the old music and moving on into a racket. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's all folk music, I suppose, isn't it? And uh, so, how much of your time do you spend now? Do you divide between music and uh, creating your art? Um, I do very little music now. Is that um, right? Yeah. But you're still gigging and stuff, aren't you? I Here and the, the occasional DJ set or right. something right. in there. Um, right. But I, I, I'm in this studio, well, it's sort of five days a week. Oh, Not do you have a routine and then? Hmm? Do I have, do you have a routine? No, no routine. No, it's um, when I've got time, I just come down or I have this itch I get yeah. itchy, itchy brain and it's just like oh I've got, I've got these ideas I wake up in the morning right just like the brain is filtering so you're a morning person rather than an evening one for working do you think uh, yeah, I suppose that's opposite of the music yeah that, uh, that is a direct opposite not necessarily I, I'm often down here at about after lunch kind of thing you know yeah during the afternoon it, it really depends on well, it depends on that itch my my yeah my need to yeah um, what i what i really love about collage um is if you're not feeling that inspired to create some original work or whatever you know that collage isn't original but um collage just kind of gets you in the mood straight away in a way um yeah. a little bit like I, I saw a documentary on uh, matisse you know when he got into just cutting up colored paper and collaging that yeah um, so just using pure color as as a rather than paint and he 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 was saying he found it liberating in that way as well um do you find that or or is it just something else that draws you into that. They have um, an awful lot of visual elements. So when I get to a charity shop and get the book, I always, yeah. I always look through them and kind yeah. of register. Yeah. Even if it's four or five books, I'll, I'll look through them and register. Yeah. And What are you looking out for? I, I, until I see it, it's, it's, it's like I'm waiting for the paper to speak to me. Right. It really isn't all up there it's right sometimes so the, you have an idea the, and then the process of you finding the materials a big part of it then yeah i'm like a kid in the toy shop yeah 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 do you yeah. go to the car boots as well or do you have favorite charity shops or uh, i've got a lot of favorite charity shops um car, right. boots. car boots is too early in the morning for me right <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that yeah yeah. So, as a morning collagist, I don't, I don't. And what, what are the eleven? What, or 12. Are, what are the different charity shops that 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 serve you best? Uh, Oxfam, any any of them, really. right? All of them. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Uh, when yeah. I'm out and about traveling England, I, it's always the search for a, a charity shop. Yeah. So, um, What's it like um, when you go to Hay on White? Do you go through? Do you, 
I would. <laughs> Are you in heaven? Um, <clears throat> going through all the bookshops there, or, or, or is that not what you're looking for? You're looking for charity shops. I think charity, yeah. Um, yeah. Bookshops are more expensive for starters. Yeah, yeah. But mind you, in Hay, they sell books by the yard, don't they? It's, you know, so many, have you been up there? Oh, no. Uh, I absolutely love it because there's, there's the highest concentration of bookshops in the world in this small village in Wales. Right. And right. There's hundreds of bookshops and they do, they, they sell books, they buy them in holes, but no, they sell them by the yard sometimes, you know. So yeah. it's a great place for buying old comics and stuff. And uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah I yeah, want to use a lot of comics. It's often the area, isn't it? One of my favorite charity shops is um, the Oxfam on Portobello Road, but they're really hip and savvy to the value of their stuff now. Right. Yeah, I know. I know <laughs> Yeah, I come across something and I go, oh, brilliant. And then I look at the price and I think, oh, yeah, might not be coming well, what, out. Um, what they have in there that they don't have in a lot of other ones is um, like, possibly because it's a posh area, but they've got a lot of catalogues from Sotheby's and Christie's, which have got all these beautiful colour prints in. Right, fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I, yeah, and that's what for me when I'm collaging. Um, I do um, find um, old prints really, yeah, so sometimes a friend of mine brought a whole bunch of really quite big prints and I'll sit with them in the studio and I'll just kind of pin them up um, and look at them and sometimes it'll be a year before I suddenly go, light bulb, there we go. So yeah, yeah I can show you one of those. Which, which was a lot of scalpel. Well, like a fine wine it has to sit there for a bit or something. Yeah, I'll just I'll just break the studio for a bit. But there's that. Wow. There, oh yeah. The the face of Christ mm. was scalpeled out. Oh. Um Dar Dar Christ. So yeah. Yeah. So, yeah I, I never know where I'm gonna go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. it really is. It's, it's what the paper brings. And I thought Christ should be speaking in tongues. So I've got words mm. of virtually every language I could find. Or oh, not words, but just letters. Because I was going to say, often your the source material of your work from the casual observer, like me, is like, a, obviously, a lot of... Um, uh, comic art and yeah, Marvel, yeah, yeah. juxtaposed with massive imagery, mythology and stuff. Um, it, it, are those the two main themes, or do? You, but looking at that, Christ, Dada, Christ, that's a totally different vibe. Again, I've seen other ones where you go off somewhere else as well. Yeah, I, but, I, I, um, I never know. I never know where I'm going to go. And it is. It, it's about the paper. You know, it, it's. Yeah. Uh, I can be sidetracked. So I'll, I'll have a, a real genuine idea. There was one that the yeah. biggest I've done is called the, the Crystal Ball. And it was when pre-COVID, I was really ill, had a bad fever, you know, three or four days. And I was out with the fairies and went through various big bang moments. And um, ultimately I, I did this, it's a nine feet by four feet collage in uh, as a triptych. Um, and the idea behind it was that anything can possibly happen in the crystal ball and everything can happen within a crystal ball. Um, so I got together a whole load of my old collages, re-collaged the collage, and then had it all together. And in the, mm -hmm. middle, in the middle of the crystal ball, each section had a tiny little mirror. So in the crystal ball, you can see yourself. And it was just like, but once I had the idea, the, the making of it, um, yeah, that was four months in operation. Um, that, that's a really epic one, obviously. Yeah. Where did Can I you ask you a question? Where did yeah. you get your information from? My ideas? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> the, the madness. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That was a fever. Can I, know, I someone... ask a question? Yeah. I was just really interested in, in everything you've said so far, obviously, but um, what's going through my mind, I'm, I'm not a collagist. I've only done one as an adult and I loved doing it, which is why I'm here. Mm. And I'm just really interested in when you've said that massive one that you've just, you know, that nine foot by whatever. Yeah. I'm just in, really interested in how you would go about that as well as intuitively, but practically. Um, yeah, there's always a pr practical problem. <laughs> so I got um, some three feet by four feet canvases and they're blank. And then you've got the idea and you, I just start, I just start pasting. Um, do you used to go straight in with the glue, do you? No, no, I lay the canvas down, down flat. Um, so I've got a few things I can just show you here where I've got the back of a canvas and I've just got a few things. I don't know, can you see those? Yeah. Just bits of paper there. They are going to be a part of this, which um, is a kind of doll's house. Wow. Thing there. Um, and then there'd be the weird juxtaposition. There'll be a load of weird shit in the doll's house. Yeah. I don't know what that's going to be yet. So do uh, you sort of lay it all out before you... To a point. Hmm. Yeah, to a point. I, I get a basic idea and then sometimes it's about what bit gets glued first about the layer so that when then something else can come on the top of it. Yeah. It, it can be quite complicated, but um, I, I enjoy the problem. You know, it's like, I, 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 you know, the, the process of solving how I'm going to put something together is, you know, but it, it's, it's kind of like a lovely, like a holistic thing, isn't it? So you need use the logic, but also this sort of gut sort of yeah. combination. Yeah, um, very much. A, yeah, a, a strange um, combination of, of thought and just allowing things to take place as well. It's very much. You know, it's what the paper brings. I keep saying this. It's just that um, bits of paper do different things to me. Um, and operating within a palette, sometimes some palettes work really well. And then you put some colours together and it's just like, oh, no, that, that's jarring. And you have to. So I've got loads of scraps of things cut out in boxes and stuff that don't make the grade, but they will somewhere. So I've, I've, I, I'm literally surrounded by paper. This is tidy for me. <laughs> it really is. So, um, yeah, yeah. Is that because you've got guests today? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Also, I had a bit of a flood in here yesterday where the studio up above leaked. It would, no, it wasn't yesterday. It was Friday, the day of the rain. Where And so I've had to move a lot of that stuff away, put it into the studio next door. I put some of it back which basically means that that table is now clear, sort of, <laughs> because it was a bit damp. Um, but every, everything was rescued. Um, I've, I've been promised a fix on the leak for the studio, so I, I can hope. But normally I'm just surrounded by scraps of paper. Uh, and the carpet is, there's all sorts of things, you know, just, just stuff. It's just, just, lying around so sometimes the floor speaks to me too <laughs> any and, uh, more questions are on, yeah um, are you working on several pieces at the same time or uh, do you try to finalize uh, yeah. one and then do another um i'm i've often got three pieces on the go yesterday i was working on that one and that one so I can show you again. It might be a bit shiny, but that's um, kind of a space thing. So I was working on that at the same time as working on the one with dolls houses. So again, it's kind of, there's a bit of William Blake, a pack of cards. Um, Silver Surfer gets in quite a lot. 
I don't know where he is, but he's down there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's again, it's the impossible juxtaposition, but it's, it's playing with the idea of some kind of mythology that is really sort of invented. So moving into a new mythology, which is um, possibly the idea of the way forward for mankind, but within pictorial form. <laughs> it's really interesting that you talk about using comic characters because I'm, I'm in Malaga and it's Comic Con this weekend. And I was so tempted to go there yesterday just to pick up images because I thought yeah, it was yeah, no, fighting no. of the day. And then I thought, no, because what I'm doing then is I'm predetermining what happens today by going there. So I didn't do it. But right. next time, I think, I, I think that's, that's, a, that's right. a fan. Yeah. I, I love those kind of Comic Con type things. My, my partner worked for Jerry Anderson. So right, right, yeah. going to Jerry Anderson conventions <laughs> and I put on my inner geek and, and really generally have a good time. So, yeah. I've never been, but I just thought some of those images would make brilliant, brilliant collages. So Absolutely. Maybe, ne maybe next year, if, if Comic Con comes back to Malaga, I don't know if it will. But, uh, uh, who knows? Yeah, yeah. I, I've never been to a Comic Con. I've only been to a Fanderson, as they're called. Right. So John, um, can we can we get to see you do some practical, uh, get the scalpel out and see, can get us going? Has, has everybody got some materials with them today? I've got I've got a, a Tate magazine. It's not a bad place to start. Right, and people do have. I've I've, I've seen I've seen scissors thrust. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. is that a good idea? Do you feel like that, or do you want to just talk about it? Well, what, what do people want to do? You're all here. Oh, I think we have to get our hands on to it. I, I, think. I think we can snip and I think so, yeah. We can talk while we're doing it, but I think so, I'd love to have a go, see what I can yeah. do. Yeah, and yeah, I've got these wonderful colours here. I, I, um, I showed you earlier by accident and, and, and the colours spoke to me instantly. <clears throat> Those. Great. Ah, so will that be a background, or Maybe. will you start with that? Yeah, <laughs> or, you, or you carve shapes out of it, or yeah, yeah, and and there's that as well, which I don't know. Okay. Mystical, mystical element of a sea lion, and yeah. You see, I um... think I'm, I'm I'm cheating here because I've got too much stuff. <laughs> yeah. There's a few news agents uh, in Notting Hill actually that sell a lot of the fashion architectural magazines right. and they'll do the old out of print ones without, they rip off the front cover and they sell them for a couple of quid. Right. Um, yeah. And they're out of date. And I often buy a lot of pile of those for collage. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite lucky. Because I'm... magazine, because they're so expensive normally, aren't they? But um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I've got friends who are collage artists and every now and again they go, I've got a pile of beanos. <laughs> uh, come round okay. with, yeah. Yeah. And I've got boxes of stuff up there that I haven't even been through. <clears throat> yeah, do you have a big collection of magazines yourself? Do you buy magazines a lot and read uh, them? Uh, yeah, um, all the colour supplements and yeah. obviously Moo. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, I, if I see stuff, I'll, I'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. Are we all snipping? <laughs> do you, um, do you prefer? Glue or, or glue sticks, or what do you use to stick it down with? Um, it depends on how big I'm going. If if I'm yeah. doing a, a collage on canvas, it's PVA glue, um, and it's yeah. I never quite know what's the best on canvas. It's PVA glue. 
and it's a bit yeah. like it's like wallpapering. Yeah, it's, it's just um, yeah, it's it, it's wallpapering, and and it just kind of um, you have to soak it for about five ten minutes before you put it on the canvas to stop it from wrinkling, stuff like that. So I use um, whatever methodology I can to to try and get that going. Well, I've got a sea line here. <laughs> but you can go um, abstract. You can go all sorts of manner of ways. To, to Do you ever that. use paint or pencils on top of it afterwards? Or? Um, sometimes if I'm cutting out a piece and it's on the dark side, but when you're cutting paper, then you get a white line on the edge. Mm. I always paint those out, generally right. with purple paint or with a black felt tip. Right, that's... And every now and again, if the color isn't quite right, I, I will alter the color with a bit of paint. I try not to let on. <laughs> I don't want to give too much away. Oh, it's my daughter again. Hi, Anne. Go and look after your children. Thank you, darling. Um, I'm just doing. Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Nice to get a Father's Day message from the kids here and there. Those two, I was quite surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you never quite know if they're concentrating. Well, you know they're not, actually, basically, a lot of the time. <clears throat> so what do you talk us what, through what you're doing now? Um, I've cut two of those blue bits apart. Yeah. And I'm gluing them together. And then I think I might be going a little bit abstract on this one. Right. Because, well, I love abstract art as well. You know, it's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm now um, making shapes at a la Matisse. Do you always use canvas or do you do it on paper sometimes or in books or? It depends how big I'm going. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm involved in quite a lot of collaborative projects where it's all quite small because it's got to go in the post. Yeah. So playing um, Neo Exquisite Corpse, the old Dada game. Oh. Um, where you get um, three people and the three people, each one will do a three inch piece at the bottom, one in the middle and one at the top. And then it goes in the post, and then someone will add one in the middle. Oh. One the top. Yeah, and then it gets oh. gets through. It's just a really nice playing with other people's ideas as well. Yeah, and that's it's just Chinese, it, it that's just, Chinese um, whispers. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. Yeah. And do the, are the results good? Are they always unexpected? And they're always unexpected and generally better than I would th think. So, you know, mm. I think I'm a great collagist. And then some of the people work that I see, I just think, wow, you know, I thought I was good. <laughs> but that's great because collage is really quite a thing now. Um, is it? I, don't, I, I didn't know. I know well, that yeah. you do it and I enjoy it, but I didn't I'm know a, it's a big thing there. Yeah, there's, I'm a member of Collagists Collective, where um, I think they're about on Facebook, 4,000 members of it. You What's know, that called? Collagist Collective. Um, oh, right. Okay. Let's check that out. 
And is there a code of practice for collagists? Is there protocols you should follow? <laughs> Um, or does anything go like if, if, if there are protocols to follow i would avoid it at all costs right um, okay great i, I I'm, I'm not going to be told what to do this is one of yeah. my <laughs> yeah one what about um, some of the smaller pieces must include the money of course and that i know that's a thing um yeah yeah um yeah, I got quite involved in doing the money projects. I got carried up as as you know, you well, so OK, so I, you started me off on new mythology. Now, behind me, there's a whole load of banknotes. I had an exhibition oh, yeah. in Hargate called yeah. 50 yeah. Notorious Notes. Yeah, and that all yeah. started out by I had a collage exhibition with Collagist Collective near Waterloo. Uh, and this yeah. guy came in and said, wow, this is collage. Will you do a five wow. pound note for me? And I went, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, sure. And he had this thing called um, Fivers. Anyway, he's got he's got one from. Um, who's the guy who did the shark? Damien Hurst. Yeah, he's got one from Damien Hurst. He's got there's about Oh, right. When the, was that oh, then? Well, the, he's going to exhibit it and auction it, and it's going to be for charity. Oh, that's coming up one, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm not sure where the money thing came in, because there's a couple of other artists doing it. There's a money burning magazine that right. I've been yeah. putting publishing on as well. Yeah. Is that, there's a guy in Alabama 3 who does it. Um, oh, what's his name? Ray. Um, I don't know, there's a few artists doing it, and I've done it. I did it when I was doing my Berlin exhibition a few years ago. I tried to get you in the, the book. There was a book called For the Love of Money Art. Oh, that was the same Nick. Um, right. Yeah, right. yeah, that, that's it. By, um, again, it's, it, it, it's on the web. It's a, For the Love of Money Art. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a connection there between appropriating money and representing it as art yeah as well as art is burning money like the klf or things yeah. like that do, yeah. you, what, do, you, do you feel a connection there with that are you are you transmutating the filthy lucre into something beautiful is that the idea or um well it's it's more about the practice of defacing money which is an illegal activity right, right. yes <laughs> <laughs> I think it gets the illegal aspect of yeah. it that kind of yeah. gets me. Although, that, of course, that that is played <laughs> quite a lot. Um, so I got one of after doing the Fiverr note. Yeah, uh, I got a text from someone called Bob Osborne, who oh. was doing Cash is King, and he said, um, "Can you do me another note?" I'm going, "Yeah, sure." He said, I'll get you into Saatchi. It's just like, oh, oh yeah, though I saw those in Saatchi as well. That, yeah. yeah. So there was a yeah. huge collection. Um, yeah. Cash King and then Cash is King 2. I was in both those yeah. exhibitions in Saatchi, mm. which is great to have, you know, that kind of behind my name being in Saatchi. Yeah, um, yeah. Good attention. Yeah. Good passion. I suppose a lot of it. The idea of defacing money, appropriate money, I can remember, I mean, Eve Klein, didn't he used to throw gold coins into the same off a bridge as a statement of... Right, yeah, yeah. Um, um, throw money, that was uh, Todd Rundgren, throw money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I know when the KLF burnt their million pounds, um, uh, they they were they were under there was some issue with the inland revenue or something because yeah you can't destroy the queen's uh, coin uh, either again illegal activity yeah so that's right it, you can't destroy it it is an act of treason yes that's it yeah. <laughs> and then Jimmy did um, a collage of um, of where he he. He did these stamps and he, he put a gas mask on the Queen's head on the first class stamp. Mm. 
And the Royal Mail gave him a bit of uh, grief at first and were threatening to sue him. And then I think they realised that it was going to give him more publicity if they did that than if they didn't. <laughs> yeah. And they sort of just turned their, uh, you know, look the other way and hope he'd go away. Which, With the cash uh, those... they, they they were wanting the police to put a cease and desist on it because they wanted the publicity. Yeah. But again, the police yeah. couldn't do it because... They yeah, didn't want to draw attention to it. That's right. That's but, a good plus, isn't it, in a way? Yeah, yeah. Um, but Banks, Today, there's a weird twist. Bank, Banksy had it, I think it was a, a die, Princess Die, 20 pound note. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We put yeah. a cease and desist on that. He wasn't allowed to print them. Right. Well, I, I don't know how, not how he gets away with what he gets away with. He's such a an amazing inspiration, especially that last one he did on the prison wall yeah. with the Bob Foss. Freedom, yeah. The Bob Foss reading. The video was brilliant. I, I know, but I mean, how does he get away with that? It's just like he's provided them with his own CCTV. Yeah. I wonder if they actually took it down or if they put a perspex screen over it. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I love artists that can play with those legal loopholes a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And get away with some amazing things. Um, it's always inspiring. I'm now doing a bit of a rip because that's the other way to get the uneven edges. What were you doing before Loot Guru? Did you come out of punk or are you a bit too yeah, young for it was that? Yeah, a band called The Transmitters. Oh, yeah. We did. Um, Two Peel sessions, right. an album, one of which was just appalling um, because of the production was just absolute shit on it. Um, I think about three singles. Yeah. But then I got bored with guitars, and that, that was when I got interested in things like tape loops, which is what. And samplers, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, I started yeah. out with. It wasn't even tape loops are a bit different from samplers, aren't they? It's a whole yeah, other world. Yeah, we the sampler then. Samplers were a bit pricey when it comes down to it. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't until the nineties that they got kind of cheap. Um, when we started doing tape loops, and this was as Loop Guru as well. Um, we, um, yeah, we were doing tape loops and then lying, lining up cassettes and then blending them in through a mixing desk. So we were like sampling without oh, cool. sampling because we couldn't afford, I think it was a fair light. They were 30 grand. Oh something. yeah. Oh yeah, I used to program them. I remember booking one for a session with my band Brilliant and it was 800 quid a day. Right. And we had a big label at the time. So we I just said, let's just get it in. And the guy turned up, it didn't have any library of sounds in it. So he just bought it, and I said, "Look, you've got to have a library of all these sounds and da da." And he said, "Well, okay." I said, "If I'll put them in for you, and then you can use it for your next client, and but give us a week with it for the same price of a day." So I, got, I managed to broker a good deal. I ended up programming them for him for doing like you know ads and jingles for a bit, so I could get time on it. And uh, I loved it. That page art, the fair light, that was the future right there. But it was so expensive. And then, but then my first one was a green gate. And it was like a little eight bit, two, three second sampler or something. It was amazing. Yeah. And we, um, we had something where we could actually get like a loop of beat in. And that was it. We just yeah. had a loop of yeah. beat. And then you could yeah. do what we did with yeah. the other stuff of. Um, just lining up. <laughs> yeah. Lining up. So we had, at some point, we'd, we'd just like borrow like two tape machines, eight cassette players, and we just line them all up and just play them through a mixing desk. And, and that yeah. was where we started. And, and then we got an Akai. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Akai. That was a revolution when the Akai came in with the Atari. But um, I suppose part. Of what I like about the the cutting up and the analog aspect of collage is the physical thing of looking through shops for the source material or, yeah. or charity shops and handling the paper and cutting them up and 
just seeing where it goes and that randomness that comes with that. Did you ever get to a point where, like with samplers, you thought, okay, I'm going to go digital and just dive totally into Photoshop? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Um, because I, I don't know how many albums I've written on just a computer. So to be made yeah. was just such a re revelation, really. To yeah. just not have to use a computer at all. Yeah. I've done a yeah. little bit of experimentation with um, computers, but I've never really liked the result. It's right. like cheating. It, that's cheating. <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, I, I, I've in, seen the in the 90s, I really got into Photoshop. Uh, when it was still quite early on, but I found that because you could rescale them and recolor them, and I do these sort of big collages of undersea things where everything was blue, and then I did this one piece where I just sort of it was like a silly skate, but you could zoom into a window and it would go into another world and then another world. It was almost like a game or something. Oh, right. Yeah, no, fantastic. And I loved all that. And then I just got fed up like you of being on the bloody screen all the time, yeah. you know, and and it just seemed so flat and so what after a while. Nevertheless, there's a lot of artists on, uh, on the Arts Lab who choose to use digital medium, either their phones or pads or computers and there's some great digital art coming out and yeah, uh, it, it, you know it, i really it, enjoy it an idea it works yeah yeah, yeah. People have got one idea and then they repeat yeah. and repeat and repeat um, yeah it's sort of easy. what i've been getting into what i've been getting into recently mm -hmm. is I've been illustrating a book of Ginsberg poems for the Ginsberg Institute um, with some black and white, just plain ink drawings. Mm. But what I found, I wasn't even conscious of it up until a couple of days ago. What I'm doing with that is exactly the same as what we're doing with a collage. I'm going through all these books and looking at all these images of the 60s, but just mm. drawing them into this new composition. Um, uh, like you would as you were sampling or using Photoshop or something, but right. just drawing it in freehand. And again, it's really good fun. I mean, it, I get a, a, a buzz that I get out of collage because even though at the end it becomes an original piece, the process is actually finding the content, you know, and then I basically steal it and put it in or copy it and put it in. Somehow I always change it to make it something else, but um, I'm totally happy with that. Um, and, and I don't feel guilty about that either. I just, I just love that process. And um, for me, it's like when I was a kid listening to Seven Inches, like, you know, David Bowie's Seven Inches, it was just like this little artifact. You just put it there and it transforms your atmosphere and mindset. It's really great. Um, and I think, you know, in the 90s, with hip hop and the idea of bands suddenly started becoming very retro, didn't they, in the 90s, like with Lenny Kravitz and then the Oasis and then... And, and, and the Blur, yes. And Blur. Yeah, and yeah, it did. It became... Um, Loop Guru got savaged by NME ones because they said, Loop Guru have gone too far this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a result, isn't it? Getting savaged by the enemy. And um, <laughs> the going too far was, we didn't want to sound like the last album, like Oasis had sounded like their last album. Mm. Like, you know, so mm. we wanted to move it on. And yeah, we'd gone too far. And yeah, I was, I was happy with that result. Yeah. But of course, you know, each generation has the, um, the the sort of responsibility to destroy the previous generation's art with their own take on it. I was listening to a, an interview with Noel Gallagher, which I wouldn't normally do. I don't know why I was, but I was. Um, and he was saying what they were doing that seemed quite traditional to me and almost like status quo, some of it. Um, but he said in the context of where they were coming from in Manchester after the baggy revolution of the Roses and the Mondays, 
yeah. what they were doing was quite radically different and uh and and the more songwriting based and uh and traditional and i was like oh yeah i never really saw that in that way you know and um kind of made me like it a bit more actually i think although i do love some oasis songs but i've never been a massive fan of that no um, i mean they did what they did and actually they didn't do it badly yeah. In terms of a festival band or stuff oh like yeah, amazing anthems, amazing um, anthems, yeah. You, you you could have a sing along, but you couldn't with Luke Guru, which is fine. <laughs> 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 well, I, I I dare say it's been said that Luke Guru pioneered a whole new genre of music with fusing world music with electronica and loops and yes, indie yeah. aesthetics. Um, and it must be a legacy you're proud of. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I remember having a conversation with you years ago about Lib Guru and that all our albums are actually imperfect. <laughs> <laughs> Would you go back and uh, re-record them? Someone told me that Taylor Swift re-recorded all her early albums so that she can own them and exploit them with advertising and stuff. And bands are starting to do that again. And I'm like, uh, why would you want to do that? But yeah, uh, you see, the thing is, is that because that was one of the reasons why I like working alone is I'm not collaborating. So we're just doing this, it's just like, I'm just yeah. me in my space. Whereas with Luke Guru, it was a collaboration. Um, yeah. Um, Did you yeah. find that frustrating having the to compromise? Were never what I wanted them to be, and because of <coughs> collaboration, they were never what Dave wanted them to be. Yeah. So I, I wanted to evolve a lot more of the live element. Yeah. And he wanted the original. Yeah. You know. It's a classic case of musical differences, almost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like. But uh, do you miss collaborating? No, I miss being with a band sometimes when I'm working on my own a lot. Um, I, I miss the random. I do it um, with collage, with you know, working with people overseas uh, and doing the postal collage. Yeah. There's also there's a bunch of passports going around. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, uh, where you wow. get um, uh, their antique passports, and I, I think I've added to about five of them, and you just get a two-page spread, and it's... Wow, uh, that's a great one, idea. One that could be highly contentious, couldn't it? Um, I mean, they're well old, but yeah. so this is, I haven't done my bit yet, but this is kind of... It's all colour. Oh, beautiful, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. got down to my bit yet because. Oh, I'm... you get. They're, they're like little books. That's really yeah, lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Going round. I don't know what will happen to them. It'd be a nice series of, uh, of uh, reproductions of those would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, so you never know. They might get published. Um, I like the idea of making little books. Have you have you done that? Where you've done that entire book because with little pamphlets? When it comes down to my collages, I like working pretty big, and I love yeah. the idea of exhibiting so that so that it's not a complete insular thing. So I'm getting people to react to what it is that I'm doing. So to exhibit is what I want to do, and a book is quite hard to exhibit because. Well, you've got to leaf through it and, you know, just... just sure. But... No, they're and, good objects to sell, yeah. no? An exhibition or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I have thought about yeah. it. A lot of my friends are doing it because... Because of the, of the collage community, as you know, I'm talking to a lot of these people. They're posting what they're yeah. doing. Uh, and quite yeah. them are doing little books, antique books. Where you just have a page mm. and you alter. Oh, I did a gardening book. I was given nine wow. pages of a gardening book to do. Oh, great. Which was a Victorian one. 
Right. So he altered to be not Victorian very much. Yeah. But again, it was a, a group of about five or six different artists going yeah. around the world. I do spend quite a lot on postage. Yeah. And that and that is my collaborative process, really. Right. That's nice. Because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. So, um, so normally with a collage workshop, I'd much rather be hands on. Great big tables. We did one at Brixton Library um, pre COVID, and it was just great fun to do. Great fun to do. Yeah. Um, I did one here in Brentford as well. And um, at the end yeah. of it, someone said, Wow, I don't need the medication they've been giving me. I should just collage every day. And it was just like, Yeah, collage. Yeah, is yeah. 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 For a couple of years, we were doing um, a once a month uh, arts lab uh, gathering in different right. artist studios would would uh, would let us use their studios and it, doing it as a group as well as it was a great thing and Not thing to do yeah and the collage was always a good one because it's actually quite easy to tidy up at the end of the day and you know, it's not going to be as messy as paint and stuff like that. And um, I remember we did one at Jimmy Corti's studio and he was building one of his like miniature tower blocks at the time. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, he he grew up in a, he had an older brother who he used to work for and they'd build these big sets for advertising companies of spaceships for photog photographers to scale up and you know, modifying railway trains. And again, it's another kind of, like the collaging is almost like a big railway set, isn't it, in a way? It so it, what, what I did in Brixton, we had these huge tables and I got wallpaper that was, oh, this, is, idea, this yeah. is the section of the wallpaper yeah. uh, we used. Ah, and okay. I did a great yeah. big piece as a background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The wallpaper, yeah. and then people just added I had a bunch of old Eagle comics, Sunday papers, yeah. and it just, it was mm. just, it's just, you know, it's amazing, two, hours, it? two hours of people snipping and gluing, some people yeah. do things to and take. Every, and everyone does it differently, don't they? They yeah. never do what yeah. you think they're going to do. Um, the whole it's already, pieces, they look great. Yeah, well, I, I reckon by, um, you know, probably this time next year or the end of next year, we'll be able to, hopefully be maybe even sooner um be able to do sort of in live workshops in in real places again um yeah. but i must I admit so. we've been doing these these over the, through the lockdown everybody's really enjoyed the uh the the inspiration people get from it it's been great yeah mm. yeah um, Nice. Can we see what you're doing a bit more can do you want to see us in your work in progress sort of thing where um, you're at I've done that. Uh, all taken images. From oh, wow. Magazine. Well, I didn't want to cheat because um, it's all taken from the same magazine. So really, it's right. just closing, just cutting those two right. of purple stuff together. With Where's the, the juxtaposition then? In the colours or the shapes? In, or... in the colour, the shapes, the, um, yeah. the woman. I'm um, coming out of a yeah, seal head, yeah. that's a seal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, well, you're quick, you're fast. Um, wow. Youth, I got a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you always stick as you go, or do you arrange them and then stick once you've got your composition? This one I was sticking as I was going, because it's right. like a, a quick fire improvisation yeah yeah with the larger pieces i lay them out get right. myself an idea of which layer to yeah. go list, you know um, yeah yeah and then glue and yeah 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 is there uh is it is there is it possible to cheat when you're collaging or is cheating totally allowed I think cheating is all of it, isn't it? I mean, I yeah, I, in a way, you're, 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 you're nicking other people's images and putting them with new images. And, 
Um, yeah. But it's just collage, you know? Um, yeah. It, it's, it's an art form unto itself that has been, it's been going well, for hundreds of years, you know? Yeah. Well, we were talking when we, before about the magazine, if, if we were going to encounter any copyright issues with the collage. And mm. you, you assured me um, that would be fine because when you appropriate art and rearrange it, and that becomes an original piece, um, yeah. generally. And, um, and then so far we've, we've been okay with that, but um, I'm wondering, I mean, do, it could be. do artists come up against that? I certainly with music now, it's, uh, it's, you know, um, it's, it's, it's so expensive now to uh, legally yeah. clear samples, so it's prohibitive, you know. <laughs> with music, I think the um, the suits have taken over in some kind of way and made it much. Yeah, better. you're right. Yeah, you've, you've got samples um, out there. Whereas for color yeah. art, I don't know. I don't think. You know, I mean, Peter Blake was doing it, and there's been a whole string of collage artists appropriating other people's material and then moving on with it. Um, That's right. There's a whole history and tradition of it. Absolutely. Yeah. But on the other hand, you've got the sort of woke cultural appropriation. It generally, their sort of line is um, if people are getting paid or credited, it's OK, you know, but how can you credit so many things, so many ways, when you've got a collage yeah. containing 100, 200 yeah. elements yeah. of different yeah. things? I don't know. I mean, for, for a lot of my collage, it, yeah, there's, there's so much that goes into them. I can't even remember where I got some of the pieces from because yeah. that's yeah. not what I'm doing. It's, like I'm, it's not, I'm going through yeah. a process of creativity rather than yeah. thinking, Oh, I must put a bit of Peter Blake in here. Um, I've got yeah, I've got stuff stick you know, hanging around the studio, which you know one day will become something. I, I think that piece there is yeah. going to go into a lot of dolls' houses, but until I get going on it, I don't know. So I've just got bits of paper dangling all over the place, yeah, yeah. waiting for, for the right moment. Yeah, well, I think it's like um, some journalists worked out recently that if we were to, you know, re-record the Orbs' first album and, and clear all the samples, it was going to cost us, it would cost us something like six million quid. And same for the first Beastie Boys album. And in a way, you don't hear um, contemporary hip-hop in that sometimes you do but it's it's changed the medium because of that um yeah. and I'm, I'm glad to hear it hasn't with the uh collage with the with the um, paper work, i've work, had work, no work. one coming after me yet and i've been yeah. in yeah I think, 12 books yeah yeah i mean yeah a lot of which have been collage specialist or yeah dark and surrealist books yeah so, yeah yeah, I've got, I've got away with it so far. Most yeah. collage artists have. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's great. That's really good to hear. Yeah, yeah. There's freedom in the image, in a way. But you know, I mean, I do. I get nervous because I use Disney. Yeah. Well, I know Jimmy used to get hit by Disney all the time. Jimmy Corti, and. Um, and with, uh, with Killing Joke, Mike Holmes as well. I think he's. We've had issues with Disney as well. We've had to change them, right? Um, yeah, because the weight of those corporations is so heavy. You can, you know, you can't possibly fight them. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, Disney would possibly come after something. I, I I do try and hide as much of what Disney is, but it's still very obvious if you're using a Disney cartoon. I, th I think it's outrageous they do that because they've imposed their culture on us for decades and decades. It's kind of like Banksy's, you know, sort of justification of, of defacing advertising. If, if someone's going to throw that down your throat, you should have the right to reappropriate it and throw it back, yeah. you know. 
And uh, um, I can't see why Disney would like even object to that, but they do. Um, well, because as I say, it's it, it's like the suits. I think Marvel yeah. Comics might one day come at me, but maybe mm. they won't. Because I mean, in in some strange way, what I'm doing is advertising Marvel Comics. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Free advert. <coughs> I think. I think if you had a really savvy, sharp brief, maybe the collages collectives could, like. Or chip in to provide one if it ever came to that. A good lawyer should be able to argue the through the course of history, the right of the artist to be able to do that, you know, and, and that and the artists well, have know, always done that, you know. But, but can I ask a question? Is, yeah, hello. Hi, it's Frank, Frank Jenkinson. Uh, a couple of questions. Hi. One, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of collage, but now I've gone kind of digital. But you're talking about copyright and stuff. There's a, an, an outfit called Redbubble who produced t-shirts and stuff like that. And I made two uh, Mickey Mouse shapes, not recognizable as Mickey Mouse, and one Volkswagen van shape. And within a day, they came back to me saying I'd violated the, the, the corporate indices they had had from Disney and from Volkswagen. Yet at the same time, right. the, same, the same company, Redbubble, uh, a couple of other people reproduce Killing Joke posters all the time. I know that apparently Killing Joke management have been on to Redbubble, but have been totally ignored. So it is a matter of suits and it's a matter of clout. So if you're a small person, you, you possibly will get oppressed and they be ignored at the same time. It depends on the commercial value of your product. The second question was yeah. uh, text-based collage. Do you have any... I know you don't use text in your collage. No? Um, I do, yeah. Um, you do. All oh, right, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's meaningless, but there's a lot of words in there. And I think I've written Dada three times on it, which is Dada Christ. Um, uh, yeah, no, I do. I do use text. A lot of the times, I try and avoid it, but have it upside down or um, in in different ways of of, of using of using text. Yeah. It's, yeah. What was your question, Frank? Then oh, it's just like the the, the, the collages that you're using, the text based. Not that I use text based very much myself, but you can occasionally use it to give a different. You are talking about juxtaposition earlier on, but to make things maybe more ironic or uh, subversive, if you like, in that sort of way. And then you got Dada Jesus there, Dada Christ. But yeah, yeah. Sorry, I mean, I've lost um, the question myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let me no, ask I... you a question, Frank, because Frank's actually a very accomplished artist, photographer pre predominantly, but great collage artist as well and uh, and painter and all-rounder really and you do a lot of uh, photoshop collage don't you frank yeah yeah what do, I you, use... what do you like about the different mediums of doing it analog to digital what's how does that work for you? Uh, the, the, the trouble with analog is you've got to collect physically physically collect a lot of stuff and the house is full yeah. of stuff so yeah. we have these clean outs from time to time Occasionally you'll find images that resonate and you can save those without saving tons of images. For a while we had, Claire, my wife does it as well. We had boxes of paper every goddamn place. So she started painting and I kind of gave up painting because my color blindness is getting worse and I can't see colors correctly. So I learned Photoshop. I do sort of a digital collage as opposed to reconstruction of images on Photoshop. So I collect a lot of um, etchings, if you like, and cut and paste those, if you like, and blend those into a digital collage, which you can print. Um, I, I just did one the other day. Well, there's not quite a collage per se. So I found this one, this one I did recently. So I found that. So it's right, kind of yeah. like, 
it's kind of like something odd about it. There's a double take about it. But that's a digital, that's printed on the printer, made yeah. from yeah. bits and pieces. Yeah. But I guess um, for me, so I've got the space. So I'll, I'll show you something else. I'll take you for that. covers that so yeah. um, that bookshelf is just full now that's why I've got a studio because if, if all this was at home um, exactly yeah, really, yeah. yeah. You know, space, space so, is, so, so having space is, is good really isn't it really? Yeah. yeah but also not having to tidy up when I finish yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very important I show you my today's effort, which is one magazine, but which is kind of texty, if you like. Oh, that's so kind of like, yeah, that's yeah. good. So yeah, so I've added one, one more thing to mine, which was some trees down there. Yeah. Uh, above the hands that are kind of. So, 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 uh, uh, so at the end, is it, you're looking for something significant in the image or just an image that kind of works? Uh, I, I like to have significance, but that is always up to the person viewing, really. You think, uh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it, it reads something to me, but that intent, I don't want to have to interpret, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's for the yeah. person watching. Yeah. Ah. So how's everyone do <laughs> with their color? <laughs> If you're in Brentford, I'm your new yeah, should we have a look? West Ealing. Yeah. You're in West Ealing? Yeah. Oh, oh right. Well, yeah. A 65 that's the, away. <laughs> that's the right. Yeah. 65 to Brentford. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's one of my haunts for the charity shops. Oh, really? In Broadway. Yeah. Try Hanwell. Hanwell's quite good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that. It, everything's, yeah. I'm very much not an artist, but I've done some collage. So here's, here's Malaga's contribution. <laughs> Fantastic. Here's Judy. Um, Hi. Hi, Judy. <laughs> oh, wow. That's fantastic. Oh, good one, Kieran. That's great. I enjoyed it. Anyways, I haven't done this for 50 years. Wow. We'll do another one. Hold it up. Hold it up. That's the thing. I've gone back to doing art after about that time for me. It's just wonderful to rediscover it. So uh, maybe I'll start now. You know? yeah. yeah. That's a very good starting point. Very good. I was a bit limited by what I had access to, but hey, I enjoyed it. That's the important thing. Yeah, I mean that one, the, well you, one magazine. So right. Well done, you guys. <laughs> but you're the artists. I'm the I'm the I'm the nursery slopes girl. We're all artists. Yeah. I've got yeah. art in my arts in my heart, but not necessarily in my hands. Yeah. Anyone else want to show their work? Thomas, my old friend. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. stay in focus. Uh, I just oops. I, I don't oh, know yeah, if you see yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Very good, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's some pieces of cake and <laughs> the time is running. <laughs> Lovely. Nice one. Yeah, good. that's that's it. I I'll I post the, the final result after. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Would it be all right if I show you the what I've done today and my very the only one I've ever done before. Yes, fantastic. So this is what I've done today, and it's not properly stuck, so... <clears throat> oh, very That's nice. Good. That's really good. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And this is the one that sort of got me into it, as I, I spent, like, quite a long time playing around with how to put it together. And, like you were saying about just sort of the images that I wanted to use and I added bits and drew on it and all sorts so it kind of goes out of the page. Mm -mm. That's wow. great. There you are, you see we are all artists. That's brilliant. That, that is Donald Trump there. 
<laughs> right, so can, shall I show you my, my offering? Um, yes, please. There you go. So I've wow. done one of my sketchbooks. It's, um, I'm not sure what it is. See, I, I, when I'm doing it, a lot of what I, what I love is part, I like taking advertising and then sort of shamanically turning it into art, you know, sort of taking that energy. And so I often use a lot of, uh, you know, sort of art, uh, TV magazines with ads in them. So I've used the eyes of that. And then there's this guy who's down here, or is he here? Here, it looks like he's going through, through some mental health anguish. With these <laughs> other guys looking around. Um, and it's a bit punk. I mean, I've, I've got the Jamie Reed behind me. Of course, that was a collage, wasn't it? The Sex yeah, Pistols. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, you know, I kind of, I still love that kind of punk element to collage as well sometimes. So, but now yeah, I'm quite happy with that. That's great. Yeah, and that's that background is an 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 ad for mental health charity, um, and all these guys look like he's taken over her eye, and he's got another eye from. So they all look like they're on the uh, verge of a nervous breakdown or something. Yeah, so somewhere in my studio, I have an eye collection. It's in a box, but I don't. I don't know. Ah, it, which again come out. Ah, that's all nice. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a big variety of scissors and scalpels? Um, I've got three Swan Morton scalpels. Right. And a spare blades. Right. Scissors. I've got two of these in the studio. Right. Because, well, because yeah. I can't find the other pair. Yeah. Because yeah. I get buried under mounds of paper. Yeah. And a Fist Stanley card. knife or do you... Fist cards. No, it's a scalpel. I do use a Stanley knife. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and a small pair of fist cards. Yeah. And this pair of scissors that are just beautiful that I bought. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Barcelona. Yeah. Is, that a dent, is that a doctor's scissors or it's something? A, it's, a, it's a stalk, I think. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah. there, there was a shop in Barcelona. I think they cost me about 60 euros or something, but they're oh. really good. And, and the fine detail. And what I realized yeah. I bought these scissors, I need to get my eyes tested because the scissors right. are more accurate than my eyes. And another part of your process, I'm intrigued. Do you listen to music while you're working, or do you like no. the radio or no. silence? It, it, it's me and my brain. I mean, oh. with my brain. So, yeah, yeah. That's, That's interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, every now and again, I get yeah. listening to music from one of the other studios. Um, right. But really, mm. I do silence. Mm. You know, I'm great. A, and yeah. any parting uh, wisdom or advice for artists uh, just emerging out of the cocoon of not being creative? Um, do it because you love it. That's it. You know, I love what you're doing because if, if you don't love it, no one will. Um, uh, and don't do it to try and be famous. Because there's no point. Yeah, yeah. Love what you do. Yeah. Well, it's mine. I've been collecting things. I, I actually, I have a, I have a system of collecting things, um, for collage. I do lots of collage, but this this one has been percolating for like a month or so and so what I do is I get home from shopping and I just put anything that's it's little sticky labels on my cupboard and because I do it all the time it doesn't really mean anything it just like this thing appears on my cupboard with all these different sticky labels from fruit and like and like um price prices on products I don't know so anything that and then a few other things as well that mean something to me that I don't know someone wrote something or yeah, so this is really easy because I just literally just stuffed them all on the paper because I've just I just took them off my. You ready? Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I found the butterfly on the floor um, during the Grenfell um, 
the Grenfell. We had lunch because it was it was the the anniversary the other day, and like we had this like free lunch for the people who live in the estate. And yeah, I just found it on the floor. <laughs> Some kid must have just dropped it. And like, wow, that's nice. Picked it. It was like it was it was um, wet. I'm always picking <laughs> up what random objects. Um, I call it pavement surfing. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I was going to add these as well, but I, I didn't have time. Like these are great from Poundland, like sparkly, sticky, sparkly um, numbers and sticky, sparkly uh, letters, all kind of like they're out of pound. So I might add those and some stars. I might do that to finish it off, to make it a bit more jolly. Great, good. <laughs> Sorry, I was so late. Um, no worries, you managed to create. It eventually. Yeah, you managed to create. I love doing collage. I've got a whole book of collage. Should I, should I flick through it? Show you. It's all, it's no, really, it's really, it's not meant to be art. This is my usual collage book. And I, this is how I sort of rationalize things that come into my life. And it, the nice thing about it is it makes you remember stuff, doesn't it? Collage. It makes you remember events. So you see that. Did you, um, we, did, um, we did another workshop, Sam, with Penny Slinger. Yeah. Right. Do you know her work? No, no, I don't think so. And she's much more kind of specific in her, what she's doing, you know, mm -hmm. what the pieces are very specific references. I mean, it's really getting sections <laughs> on Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's almost like a scrapbook, isn't it? Of yeah, just what's yeah. going on in your life. There is, it goes, it goes on and on, it's lots of it. But yeah, no, yeah. I really like collage and scrap stuff. Yeah, I've got a, um, a book called 400 Years of Collage. And it is, it's largely women and scrapbooks that started out, but also wow. screens, like the visual screens where just like bits of, paper all over them and great it's a very random element but good for you right i'm really sorry sam but i i have to leave but it's been a really really good afternoon right. yeah you know, well it's probably a good good time to uh, draw it to a close so thank you sam um very much yeah it's been really interesting sam great. really great thank yeah you. it's been fantastic thank you sam great uh, thank you Keep creating. What can I say? That's most of it. Can we can we meet again sometime? Yeah, this will be nice. You yeah. can you sort that out? Well, I hope we can do a, a, a one where we do it all together in the same place in a in a studio in London. Yeah. Um, My feeling in, not, not too long, but um, that's been great, Sam. And uh, um, Giles will post this up and send all the links. Um, but really inspiring. Great to get a bit more in depth. Uh, insight into your process into my madness it's lovely madness. to see your work as well it's really inspiring thank you yeah yeah thank you. yeah yeah great so thanks very much bye, -bye. bye everyone thank you creating. bye bye, bye. bye. And, uh, my question uh, do you um send oh, a recording is the session has been recorded so will you yes. I'll, I'll post a link on facebook Ah, cool. It's going to be on YouTube or something. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, it'll be um, it'll be on Facebook on the South London Arts page, and it'll be um, probably a link to the YouTube of it. And if you want to share your posters, just tag South uh, your pictures. Just put them up and tag uh, South London Slab Art Slab in, and we will be there. All be together, and we can yeah, it'll be great. Thanks for joining in. Brilliant. Thanks. Take care. Yeah, thank you for Bye. organizing what we did. See you. <laughs> Cheers, Sam. Bye. Cheers, you. See you. Take care.